Welcome to our next tutorial of Quick Service. We learn how to start editing the mesh, and we learn how to leave only one single mesh, but that's not enough, because for many processes, we don't want to have any holes on the mesh, because we want to have one single surface that can be sent for the automatic surfacing or being exported for printing, for example. When you edit the mesh, you can see that there is an option called holes, and it indicates how many holes this mesh has. Because this is a surface, my goal in this case is actually to have only one single hole that will be at the bottom, because this is actually a surface and it's not a solid. So let's go and start editing our holes. You can see three options here that we will explore. The first one is called the fill holes mode. This means that we are going to close the holes. We have now 47 holes. And there are two buttons that will help us to locate all the holes and apply a few operations. I will just go press next. And as you can see, the software just jumps over the mesh and highlights my individual hole. I can see a hole here and our quick dialog with a couple of options. The most left and right buttons of this quick dialog are the same for tracking. And then there is a button which will actually fill the hole. And two more options that we will explore. If I want to hide this dialog, I just click somewhere not to have any holes selected. I can zoom in and see my holes. Let's get in and select a single hole here. We have an option there to close this hole, and I will just press the button fill the selected hole. Then I can click Next and move to the next hole. Also, I will zoom this out. We have a lot of small holes here. And what we want sometimes, we want to apply carefully a batch operation, which means to close multiple holes at once. The question is that it's a bit dangerous if I self fill everything. So that's why we have some tools here about how to get the right size. In this case, what it's good to know is that we want to get something in terms of size. But I have no idea how big this is. For this reason, I can just use the measure tool and hold my left mouse button and lift it up. What it measured on the screen is roughly a sphere with a specific diameter which is around 0 0.6 millimeters. I can probably put this one millimeter. And now I can tell the software fill everything that it has a bounding radius of the hole with less than the given diameter. Why this is useful? Because it carefully can close all the small uh, holes, but leave the bigger one to the user to pay more attention and it can apply specific uh, way of filling. As you can see now we have only 10 holes and we can start exploring. Sometimes the hole can be formed because of the floating mesh and it's a bit of a mess here which obviously this is a boundary here but it's not a good font and it's really hard for the algorithm to fill this. For this reason we have the button which is called expand the selected hole. What it will do it will take the neighbors this hole and it will enlarge this hole. As you can see now, it deleted these triangles and created much better hole to be filled. I can just click here and select fill. The other option is you just highlight the hole and double click. This is a bit faster way of filling. I came and highlighted this bigger hole and I want to tell a bit more about the filling algorithm. We have two algorithms to fill the hole which is called based on tangent, which is the very general and quick algorithm to fill the hole. Or then we have a curvature based. There is an option to automatically decide how to fill the holes. The decision of which algorithm to apply when filling the hole is just counts the number of edges here, which we have on the hole. And if they are less than 40, it will apply automatically just the tangent, the simple hole filling. Otherwise, it will treat it as a big hole and it will apply the curvature based algorithm. So in many cases if the holes are small you can apply just a 
uh, tangent hole filling algorithm, or you can experiment yourself. For example, here I'll just close it with a with an algorithm that it decided to to make a curvature base, and then I can always undo. In this case, you see that it's very wobbly and the algorithm is not good enough, so I can enlarge several times until I get a better presentation, and then I can just fill with this algorithm. As you can see now, the whole feeling is way, way better. I will undo. If you want to force always to use the tangent-based feeling, you can select, and now whenever you close the hole, it will use this algorithm. So it's really a matter of experimenting and applying different approaches to get the best results. For now, I will just leave it automatically and close this with double click. Now I can move next and we'll come to this uh, situation. Let's enlarge this hole and make it bigger. I can do this twice until I get a much better um, description of the hole. You can always go back and use the selection tools, for example, here. I will delete at least to form a much better hole. You can see we have nine individual meshes, so the floating. This is, I can just come here and leave this. And now I have only one single mesh and I can carry on with hole filling algorithm. I can always apply a hole filling directly to this one, but we want to explore some the, the other two options. The second option of how to fill a hole is what is called a fill semi-hole. This means that I have a hole, I can just I'll select this mode here and I can just pick the first point and the last point and now the software expects me to select which side of this semi-hole I need to be filled. In this case I can just highlight the left side and click. The software automatically will fill this hole. It will apply the same here. So this approach is suitable when you have um, um, cases like this one and you carefully want to do the whole filling step by step. I'll go back to fill holes and now I'll show you that if you highlight here in the software will tell you holding the control key while you are in the fill holes will temporarily switch your mode to fill hole, fill semi holes so you can quickly just fill this semi hole, lift the control key and now you can just double click to fill this hole. If you are not happy you can just edit undo and you can carry on with filling the um, small hole step by step until you get a satisfactory result. I'll do this, then I double click and I close this hole. Let's continue with the, the other hole here. I will just extend because it's uh, I need this to be bit better. I will expand here. Now I have a better hole and to complete this session I'll just double click and close. So now I see I have two holes. This is my last one here that I need to fill and I'm ready with the hole filling. So now the software has only one individual hole which is okay because um, this is uh, what I need. In some cases it's useful that you may want to actually smooth the boundary a little bit for the purposes of um, hole filling to get a better result. You just click on a hole and then you press the smooth boundary button. In this way you can just uh, slightly improve the continuity of the hole and you, that later you can apply the hole filling. So this was all about uh, fill holes and uh, semi-hole filling. But now I'll just uh, try to do something else. I'll come back and on purpose I'll just delete this area like this one and I'll completely delete uh, this part here. I will just select more and delete it. So what we have here in terms of um, I will start editing my home if we have this here, in some cases it's good to fill the semi-holes, but there are cases like this one where you want to bridge. The bridging is the third command and you can enable this mode by selecting this button or while you are in the fill hole you can just hold the shift key. 
So let's select this mode and then I can just click and pick the two points from two different holes where I need to create the bridge. Because the software doesn't know which side, you need to select and uh, define which um, side you need to create the bridge. The algorithm sometimes may not be able to complete the whole fitting, but you can always come and just uh, complete your work even if you get some undesired result. So this was the, um, the whole fitting between the uh, bridging between the two holes. In some cases, if you have a single hole, because this is a single contour, you can also apply this bridge operation. I can just pick this and then I can click and select this. In this case, the software automatically knows that this is what he needs to do and will create the bridge automatically. And again, in conclusion, to show you a quick trick how quickly you can use this while you are in this mode, if you hold control, it will just create a semi holes mode. But if you hold shift, you can see the little icon with the bridge, it just turns into the bridge mode and I can just create these bridges. Lifting the shift and not holding any key just leaves you in a fill holes mode and you can fill the holes. Now it's the time to say that sometimes the algorithm may fail in terms that it may leave a little small badly formed um, holes and in this case you can just select these, use the extend, selected holes and double click to fill this. In such a way you can carry on and fill all the holes of your, of your mesh. I hope this video is useful, just give uh, practice and if you need more information contact us. Thank you for watching.